What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I recently returned from exploring France's region of Normandy and I want to share with you my favorite places, so here's my Normandy Top 10. Located in northern France, Normandy is one of the most famous regions in the country, home to incredible history and scenery. From the D-Day beaches of World War II to the wonders of Mont Saint-Michel, Normandy is one of France's most incredible places. Let's start this video off at Etretat. Located about a three hours drive from Paris, Etretat was the first place I explored in Normandy. The main reason I wanted to come here was to witness impressive sea cliffs. When we reached Etretat, we walked through the beautiful coastal town and reached the beach. It offered great views of the cliffs and I couldn't believe how big they were. After we decided to go on top of the cliffs, we walked along the beautiful boardwalk and made it to the top. My favorite feature of the cliffs are these sea arches. There are three of them and I also like the pointed sea stack called the Aiguille d'Etretat. After a bit, sea fog started rolling and it gave the area such a different vibe. You can also hike above the cliffs on the eastern side of Etretat. There's a church up there and the views are incredible. If you can, I recommend staying until sunset. The sun will hit the cliffs of Etretat perfectly, lighting them up with an orange glow. It's hard to match the scenery of this coastal town. Another nearby place is Ficom. It's located just 20 minutes from Etretat and it's this charming port town. One of my favorite features of Ficom is its beach and lighthouse that sticks out pretty far in the ocean. I mean, such a beautiful town worth visiting, especially if you're already at Etretat. Afterwards, we're going to visit the charming town of Honfleur. Located about 50 minutes from Etretat, Honfleur looks like a town straight out of a Mary Poppins film. The highlight of Honfleur is its old port. It's lined with these colorful townhouses that were built from the 16th to 18th centuries. I really enjoyed walking around the town. The port was so cool with the contrast of the ships against the beautiful townhouses. I loved when it got darker and Honfleur was lit up with its lights, giving it a magical vibe. If you're in Normandy, you gotta give this enchanting town a visit. Afterwards, we're going to head inland up the Seine River to visit Normandy's capital, Rouen. Back in the Middle Ages, Rouen was one of the largest and most prosperous city in medieval Europe. The amount of history that has taken place here is endless. In 1431, Joan of Arc was burned here at the stake, which I thought was pretty wild. Today, it's an incredible city to walk through. One of my favorite features of Rouen is its clock. It was made all the way back in 1389, making it one of the oldest mechanisms in France. I mean, it's crazy to think that that clock has been ticking for over 600 years. Another cool place located up the Seine River from Rouen is Les Andelis. It's this little commune built right on the river. My favorite feature of the area is the Chateau Gallard. It's this hilltop castle that was built in the 12th century and offers an incredible view of the area. Afterwards, we're gonna head over to Normandy's D-Day beaches. During World War II, the Nazis were in control of Europe's western coast, stretching from Spain's border all the way up to Norway, and this was called the Atlantic Wall. On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces landed on Normandy's beaches to break through the Nazis' Atlantic Wall. It is the largest seaborne invasion in history and led to the liberation of France and Europe. There was five beaches that the Allies invaded on June 6. One of the most famous is Omaha Beach. It's an eight kilometer section of coast and it was the most heavily defended beach and resulted in the most casualties. Today the beach is a beautiful and serene place I and mean, it's crazy to imagine what happened here nearly 80 years ago. There's this monument and metal sculpture called Le Brave that's built on the beach. While I was there the ocean was up to the sculpture but during low tide you can walk pretty far out on the beach. Afterwards we're going to visit the Normandy American Cemetery. It's located on the hills above Omaha Beach and it's a really solemn and sacred place. It was dedicated in 1956 to honor the American troops who died in Europe during World War II. There are 9,388 white marble graves and each one had their name, military rank, and when they passed away. I was just crazy to see how perfectly placed each grave was in every direction. It was humbling to walk around these sacred grounds and reflect on the sacrifice and bravery of these American heroes. I also visited the nearby Le Combe German War Cemetery and it was a fascinating place, definitely worth experiencing. Afterwards, we're gonna visit Pont du Hoc Located about 15 minutes from Omaha Beach, Pont de Hoc was a strategic promontory for the Nazis. It's situated on a cliff 35 meters high and it was heavily fortified with bunkers and artillery. Before D-Day, it was attacked by the US and Royal Air Forces and today you can see the numerous craters left behind. On June 6, it was attacked and captured by the Allies. The troops had to use these 30 meter rope ladders to scale the sea cliffs. It was really interesting to walk around Pont de Hoc and see all the craters. It was also really fascinating to walk inside the bunkers as well and to think that there were soldiers in here almost 80 years ago. Afterwards, we're going to head over to Aromanche Le Bon. 
It's located in the Gold Beach Landing Zone, which was another D-Day beach. Now, Aramatch is where one of the two Mulberry Harbors were constructed. They were these artificial harbors used to rapidly offload cargo from the boats. Now, the harbor was in operation for 10 months after the D-Day landings. Today, remains of the Mulberry are still on the beach, and you can walk out to them during low tide. And it's just fascinating all the events that took place here during World War II. Afterwards, we're going to visit Utah Beach. Now, this is the westernmost of the D-Day beaches, and it was invaded by U.S. soldiers with the objective to secure the beachhead on the Cotentin Peninsula. I really enjoyed this area and beach. I loved how there wasn't much on the coast besides grass, sand, and a few remaining bunkers. There was also a good amount of people being pulled around by horses in these little carriages, which I thought was pretty cool. In the distance, I also saw a sunken ship from World War II that was pretty fascinating. I really enjoyed walking along the beach and exploring some of the bunkers. There was also a nice memorial and museum on the eastern side of the beach worth visiting. Afterwards, we're going to visit the nearby Gatteville Lighthouse. Located about 45 minutes from Utah Beach, the Gatteville Lighthouse is an architectural wonder. With a height of 75 meters, it's the third tallest traditional lighthouse in the world. It was built in 1834, and at the time of its completion, it was the tallest lighthouse on Earth. I came here after it was closed, but when it's open, you can pay a few euros and walk the 365 stairs to the top of the lighthouse to get incredible views of the area. Afterwards, we're going to visit one of my favorite places in Normandy, Plage de Calgran, located on the western tip of the Cotentin Peninsula. I was amazed by the beauty of this place. The beach has these really nice cobblestone rocks, but when the tide goes out, there's some really nice sand to walk on and also some fascinating rock formations. We walked over to this overlook and the views were amazing. I mean, I couldn't believe the sea cliffs there. They were so high and it looked incredible with all the colors. After we had a great time enjoying the beach and waiting for the sunset, I mean, there's no greater feeling than running free by the ocean. Also in the area is the sea village of Guri. It's located just north of the beach and there's this lighthouse very similar to the Gadaville one, except that this lighthouse is isolated on a small rock island. Now for our final destination, we're gonna visit Mont Saint-Michel. I have to say this is my favorite place in Normandy and France. This place is truly magical. Now to get to Mont Saint Michel, you can't drive directly to the tidal island. Instead, you can park in the lots outside and either take a shuttle or walk about four kilometers to Mont Saint Michel. I definitely recommend walking if you can. As you approach the island, it's quite the experience. It made me think how people must have felt throughout the ages as they came here. When you reach the island and walk through the gates, you feel like you're taking a stroll into a Harry Potter movie. I felt like I was walking down Diagon Alley. Now the crowning feature of Mont Saint Michel is its abbey. Its construction began in the 10th century and it was added onto throughout the ages. We took a tour of the abbey and it was one of the coolest buildings I've ever experienced. I mean, I felt like I was walking through a real life Hogwarts. It costs about 11 euros a person and it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour to walk through the whole abbey. There's several lookout points that give you incredible views and vantage points of Mont Saint Michel's Bay. After we went back inside the abbey and I couldn't believe how beautiful it was, I mean, everything was so grand and huge. There's like all these like stone arches. The architecture here is just mind boggling. After exploring the abbey, I enjoyed walking above the city walls, giving us a new perspective of Mont Saint Michel's main street. Now afterwards, the sun began to set and the tide started to come in. I was amazed by how fast the water levels were rising. I understand now why it was so dangerous for the medieval pilgrims to walk to the island. On our way back, we met up with some sheep in the fields, and it truly was a special experience and one of my favorite memories from our time in Normandy. Well, that is it for my Normandy Top 10. It's one of my favorite regions in France, and I hope you all can give it a visit. I got a new exciting video of France posting soon, so stay tuned for that. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at shirley.films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.